Thank you so very much, uh, Madam Chairman. Whenever I'm back in Georgia, I hear about the rising costs for families, and I'm deeply alarmed by how the global semiconductor shortage is behind many of those rising costs in the automobile industry. We've seen costs increase for new cars by 11%, 37% for used cars. Almost everything relies on semiconductors, not just cars, but uh, cell phones, washing machines, which means that due to this chip shortage, families have faced sharp increases in the cost of computers and cell phones, which they need for work and school and many other products. Mr. Gelsinger, yes or no, do you agree that the semiconductor shortage has likely contributed, at least in part, to higher prices of things that families rely on, like cars, computers, and washing machines? Yes, I agree. In fact, rising costs don't just hurt car buyers. Thousands of workers, like those at the Kia plant in West Point, Georgia, uh, which had to shut down a couple of times, uh, have been affected by the shortage. And that's why last May, I proudly supported uh, federal funds to increase uh, uh, domestic semiconductor production. I was proud to work with Senator uh, Peterson on that issue uh, when the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act uh, went through committee this la uh, last May. And I supported it again when the House recently passed the America Competes legislation. Mr. Gelsinger, do you also agree that providing additional resources to the Chips for America Fund would help alleviate the semiconductor shortage? Yes, I believe it would. It takes time to build new factories. So, you know, the urgency associated with this is uh, critical, but unquestionably, uh, this will help to alleviate uh, the shortages, mostly in the medium and longer term, but immediately helping is a very positive step. We've already wasted several quarters since the Senate acted uh, last year, and now it's time for us to move forward rapidly. I agree. I think it's past time and that Congress uh, move immediately uh, and pass this funding uh, that the president needs to sign uh, into law. Now, related to the semiconductor issue, uh, uh, America, of course, needs a robust semiconductor workforce that reflects the diversity of the nation. As Congress makes investments in domestic uh, semiconductor manufacturing, we must make sure that we have the benefit of all of our talent. And we ensure that businesses are doing what they can to make semiconductor jobs more accessible and attract partners from underrepresented communities. I'm a graduate of an HBCU, I'd argue the greatest of all, Morehouse College. Mm. Uh, but I've long been a champion for all of our HBCUs, which have been punching way above their weight, doing so much for so many for so long with so very little resources. I'm proud to have fought for $1.2 billion in funding in, recent, in the recent competition package to support research capacity building at HBCUs and MSIs, including for semiconductor-related research. And I also recently sent a letter with uh, Senator Padilla uh, supporting a provision in the America Competes Act that would create an Office of Opportunity and Inclusion at the Department of Commerce to develop standards that will help expand opportunities in the semiconductor industry for traditionally underrepresented individuals. So I want to ask each of you, as industry leaders, would an Office of Opportunity and Inclusion support the semiconductor industry's efforts to attract more women, more people of color, uh, and rural workers? And, and do you see this as essential to the work? Uh, Mr. Gelsinger? Yeah, I would say whether we have the office or not, we are deeply committed to these topics. You know, we've been increasing our underrepresented minorities and our female workforce. We've set a goal to have 40% females uh, by uh, 2030, part of my selection of Ohio, right? And uh, our recent uh, education initiatives that we just announced last week for a $100 million investment were specifically because of increasing our minority and uh, female workforce. We would love to discuss this topic uh, with you more deeply. But do you think having an office might encourage others similarly positioned to, to take to make a similar commitment? It certainly could, and we'd look forward to that conversation with you. Thank you. M Mr. Uh, Merotra, I'm sorry, I hope I didn't butcher your name. 
No, you didn't. Thank you. Uh, Senator, we are well aware of your and Senator Padilla's uh, letter regarding uh, Office of Opportunity and Inclusion in the Commerce Department. I would like to highlight that Micron has been a strong proponent. It's a core value of Micron to promote greater diversity and to increase representation of um, minorities within Micron. We publish a diversity and inclusion report. We call it For All every year. And this report highlights our key initiatives in terms of increasing representation across all diverse groups, in terms of pay equity, not only in terms of gender pay equity, but pay equity not only for salary, but for bonuses and stocks for all underrepresented groups in the community, focus on engaging with minority-based suppliers as well. So we have, and putting our cash, investing it with those that represent minority institutions in terms of financial institutions. So we have several initiatives, we report our progress. Our values are very much aligned with promoting greater opportunity and inclusion, and we continue to be strong. So, so you, would you would support such an office, and you are pledging your own commitment uh, to make sure that people of color and women are, are represented and, and provide access to employment opportunities. Mr. Archer? Yes, also at LAM Research, this is an incredibly important uh, topic, and, and therefore we're supportive of any activities that can help us expand the, the, the workforce in the United States, in, including tapping into um, diverse work, work uh, uh, groups. One of the things that we're most proud of is we partner uh, with organizations like the National GEM Consortium, which has members, many of which are the HBCUs. And what we promote is, is trying to help students pursue advanced degrees, masters and PhDs in science and engineering, so that they can build meaningful and long-lasting careers in, in companies like ours and others throughout the semiconductor industry. Thank you all so much. I look forward to working with industry leaders to increase semiconductor production in our own country and that we make good use of all of our talent. And Senator, I just wanted to highlight to you that we recently opened a center in Atlanta, Georgia, and we are engaged with HBCUs there as well. And the purpose of this design center that we have opened there, where we'll be recruiting 500 engineers over the course of next few years, is really to, again, tap into outstanding diverse talent that exists in the region. Thank you so much. Um, 